Ahoj, this is Denka. I think I've just had it enough with this chair. I've been so patient with this chair. You know how many times I have to edit the video because of this beautiful sound? I think it's time to go. It's time to replace it. So, yeah, but I can get up because then you would see that I'm wearing jogging pants. So, I'm just gonna try to sneak up, but that's gonna take forever. So much better and quiet and so much softer. I'll show you when I'm sitting on at the end. Ahoy, this is Zdenka. I've got some goodies here. Lenses, camera, LED lights, optical prism, uh, glow sticks. Another little tiny LED light, which actually is underwater as well. Super cheap. Just rediscovered it the other day. Where have you been my whole life? Highly requested topic, low light photography is here. I've got seven tips how you can improve this area of photography. And obviously this is this month's camera challenge for you and for me as well. Video challenge is coming up next week. And if you are new here, welcome. My name is Zdenka Karola. If you want to learn how to take better photos and videos with the latest gear and possibly participate in creative camera challenges like this one, consider subscribing. First and foremost, when you are taking photos in low light, you will grab whichever camera you have at home, but you might be a little bit picky when it comes to the lens because you want to use faster lens and how do we know which one is faster f 1.4 1.8 or 2.8 are great in low light because the aperture is wide open and can take in more light and because the aperture is wide you are able to shoot with faster shutter speed which means very little camera shake and sharper photos so i have here canon m50 camera and i have here also the kit lens 15 to 45 millimeters, which is not good because it is f 3.5 to 6.3. It's gonna perform very poorly in low light and it's gonna be very slow. But I also have here Nifty 50, 50 millimeters lens, which is f 1.8. And I have here Veltrox Speed Booster, which is gonna make it even better. So that combo is a perfect combo to shoot in low light. Also, I could be using, if I wanted to, Canon M50 with a truck speed booster and perhaps this telephoto, which I still have, I was using it with the um, DSLR. Because it is f2.8, it's gonna be very fast in low light. Whenever you're shopping for a lens and you see the low number, the f-stop number, that means it's gonna be very good because it's gonna be wide open, the aperture will be wide open. That's what you want for low light. Besides a great lens, you might want to have also one of these in your back because low light photography doesn't mean no light photography. If you are taking photos outdoors somewhere in a city, then you might take advantage of street lamps or maybe neon signs or little light coming from the store's window. If you are taking photos indoors, then just use a little lamp on a table or take advantage of that little light peeking through the window or like I said, have some of these in your camera bag and these are LED lights. I love them all and I listed them below the video in case you want to check them out. Falconize F7, We Light, this little cheap cube light, which is my newest best friend. Sometimes when I'm taking photos of an object, I need tiny light. This one is still fairly big, even though it's small and I need to hide it sometimes behind the object, but this one does the trick because it's tiny, it's cube light. The best part of it is that it comes with these color gels, so you can change the color of the light if you need to, and you can stick it right 
underwater. Having a few of those LED lights can get you highly creative. You can change the lights, you can change the colors, you can change the strength, you can move them around the object, see what they do. You can even put it right behind the object to create silhouette. The possibilities are endless. Those little things are extremely helpful. I think it's time to talk about settings. And how about we start with ISO. When you are taking photos outdoors and it's very bright and sunny, you want to go with the lowest ISO possible, which is ISO 100. But the less light, the higher ISO needs to go. So you might increase the ISO to 200, 400, 800, and so on. Now, the higher you go with the ISO, the more noise, those little dots you will introduce in the images. If you shoot stock, for example, you don't want to go much higher with ISO because the photos will get rejected for sure. They don't like that noise at all. But if you don't shoot for stock and you're shooting it for yourself or maybe social media or just for print, a little bit of a noise can be actually a good thing. Not too much though, but a little bit. It can create a certain feel about the image, especially if you're printing it on a canvas, it can be a good thing. There are many recommendations online which ISO it's good to go with. I would personally say that every camera and every lens is different. So what I would do, I would take test images with the camera you have and also with the lens you have, blow it up on a computer, look at it across the whole screen and think what is your comfortable level when it comes to noise. For example, for me, uh, this setting, I would go up to 1500, ISO 1500, but I would not go any higher. I simply don't like that noise that much. If you are taking a photo of a movement, of an object which is in motion, then you will have to introduce more light because you will need to use faster shutter speed if you don't want any blur in the images. But if you are taking photos of static object, non-moving object, then consider using slow shutter speed. But for that, you will need to place your camera on a tripod. Otherwise, you will end up with blurry images, which you might not want. That's why these lenses are so expensive, because they do half of the job. You might also not want to touch the camera, the shutter physically, because you might introduce camera shake right there if you are taking very long exposure images. So it is recommended to use shutter release or timer, or you can pair your camera with your smartphone and just simply take the photos from your smartphone. ISO will decide how fast the light will enter camera sensor and aperture will decide how much light will enter. So try to go with low f-stop, f2.8, f1.8, but always check if that's the result you actually want, because the lower the f-stop, only tiny little portion of the image will be sharp. Everything else will be blurry, the foreground and background. So if you look at the object, make sure that you see enough sharpness. If it's just too shallow, if it's too little of a sharpness, then you might increase the f-stop a little bit higher. Whenever you take photos in low light, you might not always like the colors in the photos afterwards because you might have selected the wrong white balance. Simply put, you need to tell the camera how the white should really look like. You can go through all white balance settings such as light bulb, tungsten, shade, or you can make your own custom white balance. Once you set that correctly, you will avoid having the yellow, orange, or blue shade in your photos. It really depends what type of light you're working with. Your turn now. Low light photography theme it is. Take photos outdoors, indoors, not on a bright sunny day, but in a low light settings, any object, anything goes, and upload them to ZD Camera Challenge Facebook group or on our Instagram and use hashtag ZDChallenge15 for a chance to have your images featured and reviewed early next month, which is July 2020. Don't forget to mention camera, lens, and settings you are using. And again, if you need instructions how to submit the images, everything is written below the video in the video description. And again, all the equipment and all the props I was using in today's video, except the flower, you can get that in a grocery store. I listed below the video in the video description in case you want to check that out. 
Hit the thumbs up if you liked today's video and subscribe to all future videos like these. If you have any questions, comments, or simply want to say hi, you can do so in a comment section below. I'm looking forward to seeing your work. I can't wait. I'll see you next time. Ciao, ahoy. <laughs> I really have had it with this chair. I mean, like, I did put on a little bit of weight, but just because it's all that thing we are at home and I can go skating and I can go really exercising and all that, but not my fault. I didn't really, I didn't make it like that. I don't even know how much I weigh. Scale broke. I didn't break it. The battery died. And it's just better not to buy new batteries. So any guesses, do you know what I'm sitting on? <laughs> By the sound, anybody knows? No? It's the outdoor cooler, the camping cooler. And I have a cushion on it, so it's very soft. Look. One. See you next time.